you know, a story comes out. Obviously, you, you, you know the story. NBC Chicago, and you've been talking about this nonstop for, for a minute. Rod Blagojevich files lawsuits seeking right to run for office again in Illinois, right? Former governor of Illinois filed a lawsuit in August of 2021 arguing his civil rights uh, uh, were violated when the Illinois State Senate banned him from running uh, for state or local office. More than a decade earlier, in 2009, the Illinois General Assembly removed Blagojevich as governor and barred him from seeking elected office in Illinois ever again. I think they even put your name in there. In federal civil rights complaint, Blagojevich, now 65, declared what happened to him was unconstitutional because he was denied the right to call witnesses and to cross-examine the government's witness. Uh, the governor also claimed he was denied the right to pre present evidence, especially certain undercover tapes. And as a result, according to the court rulings, people have been denied the right to vote. Who in the past has had a similar situation like you who went to jail, did time, came back, and they were able to run again, and they went back into office in some sort of an office in the past. Has anyone ever done that? Oh, yes. Uh, Marion Barry, the Washington, D.C. mayor. Uh, we have an alderman in Chicago by the name of Walter Burnett, bank robber. By the way, a great alderman. Been there for 27 years. He's been allowed to run. Um, I'm the only one that expressly has been put in legislation that says I can't run for anything. And there's a story behind that. The Marion Berry, what happened with Marion He was caught doing crack, I Crack believe. cocaine on yeah. tape, and then he came back and was elected mayor again. In 19 Maybe you should have been doing crack rather than uh, <laughs> Maybe. selling a Senate seat. Hold on, no, no, no. There was never a sale of the Senate seat. I just got to tell you, and in sure. July 22nd, 2015, the appellate court confirmed it. They called it routine political log rolling. I was vindicated on that. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> In 1916, by the way, the socialist candidate for president, Eugene Debs, got something like two million votes in a presidential race while sitting in the state penitentiary in Indiana. So he was actually able to run for president while sitting in a prison cell in Indiana. Um, but look, there was a story behind that, too. They came to me after I was arrested, the political leaders in Illinois. This is how cynical they are. And they were offering me a deal. If I step aside, don't pick a senator and temporarily become incapacitated. There's a law that allows a governor who, if he or she is sick, can be incapacitated temporarily. The lieutenant governor assumes the responsibilities of the office. They were going to extend that law to me. This is what the offer was. If I agreed to do this, then I could keep my pay as the governor, something like $170,000 or $190,000 a year, my security detail. And once I clear my name, I can become governor again. This is what they offered me. Mm. I, I turned it down for many reasons. But the, and part of the deal was you can't pick a senator. I turned it down for many, many reasons. Chief among them was I did nothing wrong. I'm not giving it at all. And they know I did nothing wrong because this is legal politics that's routine, happens all the time. So I picked a senator, which pissed them all off. I picked Roland Burris, an African-American respected person in Illinois politics, for, former attorney general in our state. I did it in spite of the fact that every Democratic senator, including Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, all wrote me a letter saying, if you send us a senator, we're not taking one. And so I sent this African-American man there, and for the first day, they wouldn't let him in. It was like in the age of Obama, our first black president. We had gone back to the early 1960s, and James Meredith is trying to get into Old Miss. They wouldn't let this guy in, the most exclusive club in the world, the United States Senate. Well, America watched this on television, and within a day, I think the African-American community around the country saw it. The Democrats folded, and he became... They let him in and held a dinner for him that night. Typical politicians, right? So when I was doing that, they said to me, if you pick a senator, we're going to throw you out of office before Groundhog Day, and we're going to pass a law that disqualifies you from running for anything. That's how that happened. And I argue it's unconstitutional. It's directed at me, and I should have a right to run. But better than that, the people of Illinois should have a right to vote against me if they want. I'm not interested in running for anything necessarily. The first primary I'd have to win is my wife. She's made it clear. If I run, I'm doing <laughs> so it with a second wife. Are you wife. saying you're not interested in running? Even if you win this lawsuit, are you trying to tell me with all your political acumen and everything that has been built up with you over the last decade, you have no interest in running for public office again? Look. Because I don't believe it. There's like, no, I, I, I feel like I see yeah. a, a, a politician, a well-polished politician who has a, you know, a, a story where he's been dragged through the mud and you have something, you have a chip on your shoulder, like Pat yeah. said. So even if you win this lawsuit, are you saying that you don't want to run? Okay. I don't know if my wife's watching this, but let me answer this as best I can. Yes. Okay. Cause I'd have to get through that. Cause she's been clear. If I ever get in politics again, I'm doing it with my second wife and she's unbelievable. <laughs> she did say that she, by the yeah, way. <laughs> she says it repeatedly. Yeah. 
What a wonderful wife. She defied all the odds. Nine to one odds when I was arrested, the Vegas odds makers had it that she would leave. I know as a statistical fact that a woman and a man, if a guy's in prison for four years or more, there's better than 90% chance she's out. She leaves. She can't wait, especially if he's got a lot more time to do, which was the case with me. She's defied all the odds. She's a wonderful mother, best person I've ever known. I love her. She's great. And she's gone through so much because of the career I had. She suffered greatly. So do I need to be a better husband and think about her? Of course. And that's the first priority. In the event that I were somehow successful in this lawsuit, and I, I say somehow just because I have nothing but bad luck in that building. But if that happened, are you asking me, would that whet my appetite? Would I be in, very interested in exploring the possibility? I'm like one of those boxers who fights into the 50s, right? You just can't get out of that arena, right? <laughs> you want to get back in there and get that title back. So there is that element I have. And I do look at Chicago. I look at our horseshit mayor. She sucks. Our city is crazy with violence. You're no fan of Lori Lightfoot. She's a bad mayor. I actually like the fact that she's uh, I like the fact that she's a woman. I like the fact that she's black. I like the fact that she's a lesbian. The thing that qualifies her is she's a former U.S. attorney. But she, uh, she's a terrible mayor, and she's given pandering. Sounds like a woke dream right there. And she's, and she's gone on to this whole defund the police stuff. She's not back in the police. We have tremendous crime in our city, and 75% of the victims are black kids, black people, and it's just tragic. Anyway, to answer your question, if I won that lawsuit, I would, of course, be really interested. I might want to tippy-toe and tap my wife on the back on the shoulder and say, honey, can we have a talk? And maybe see if perhaps maybe she might have an open mind. What would you run for, though, if you could? What would you run for? Would you go senator? Would you go straight governor? Would you go mayor? What would you run for? Well, I mean, you know, I wouldn't really, I don't see myself being governor again. I'll tell you, Mayor of Chicago would be a great job. I'm not saying that, though. I don't want to make any noise it's, or news because it's high. It just, I, right now there's a law that says I can't do it. So it's, but that'd be a job that'd be really challenging to make what Chicago be great again. What would you do differently than, than what she's doing right now? Again, with the whole Chirac thing. And yeah. you know, every time you turn on the news, more murders in Chicago, July 4th, on New Year's, yeah. Chicago. Like, it's just constant. What would you do differently? I'd How hire, could you change Chicago? I'd hire 10,000 more police officers. I'd get them up from around the community, a lot of them from the black areas, the black neighborhoods, train them the way you're supposed to be trained. In other words, I'd double the police force. I'd have the backs of the police, and we know where the gangbangers are, and we'd go out and arrest them. We'd so you're arrest not trying them. to defund the police in Chicago? Just the opposite. I'd dramatically increase funding for the police. You don't sound very much like a, like a woke Democrat to me. I'm an orphan Democrat. That's why I call myself a Trumpocrat. Yeah. I think millions of others like me across America are like this. We Break that Democrat. down. What the, what the, you're the first person I've ever heard use the phrase Trumpocrat. Obviously, he... You're the first person to be fired by Trump and then pardoned by Trump. You're an exclusive company right there. What does it mean to be a Trumpocrat? A Trumpocrat is um, someone who's still on the side of working people, everyday people, the silent majority, forgotten voices, um, who recognize there is a ruling class in America. They're elitist snobs, and they screw ordinary people. They lie to them all the time, like that Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau. What a liar he is. We'll go into that in a minute, maybe. But um, And that Trump has started a political movement that he's, that's part of the realignment of American politics where a lot of traditional working class men and women who voted Democrat historically have recognized the Democratic Party has taken them for granted and in many ways sold them out, like trade agreements with China and some other countries that have sent their jobs overseas. Those types of voters have always been the ones that have been the ones I really fought hard for. They were like my mother and father. So I think... Uh, I would say that that's a Trumpocrat. And I think, you know, he's got his own style. Everybody has their own style. But uh, the, the actual movement that he started, I think, is for real. And there's mm-hmm. a political realignment that's going on in America. And I predict that Democrats are going to see a tremendous loss of black support in this next election and the growth of the Latino voters for this new kind of politics that Trump is backing. Not the old line Republican Party of Romney, McCain, or McConnell, but the sort of new politics that Trump has created. I think you're going to see an increase in Latino voters. Eventually, they're going to become predominantly Republican voters. I do believe that because they work hard, live in the American dream. They're like the new Italian-American community in America. And they're growing, the fastest growing community in all of America. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.